This week we are looking at another very popular pair of open back foldable headphones and it's these from Harman, the K245s. Hello, welcome back to me, David, talking tech and audio. If you've already subscribed, then you'll know that I do it every week here on the channel. And if you haven't, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say. Now's a great time to subscribe, the buttons are just down there. Turn on the bell as well while you're there for all notifications to make sure you never miss another video. And also maybe give me a like too if you're enjoying the content that I'm making here on the channel. And before we start talking about these great headphones, the K245 from AKG, just to let you know that the first members newsletter went out last weekend. There'll be another one coming out this Sunday as well. They're gonna be weekly, so pop on over to my website, talkingtechandaudio.com, and leave me your contact details there. And the next episode of Minus 16, the podcast, will be out this coming weekend too. You'll find in the description the places that you can listen to it on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. And if you listen on Apple, maybe you could comment and review there as well, as it really helps the podcast out to grow out to a larger audience. Right, time to start talking about these headphones in the AKG 245s. The company behind these headphones, AKG, is over 70 years old with a million units of sales to their name. They clearly know what they're doing when it comes to developing and selling headphones. And these, the 245s, are no exception. They're very stylish. I happen to really like this airy light styling to them. The ear cups are memory foam. They are removable, as you may be able to see there. Very easily detachable. There's a massive left and right inside of them. <laughs> Just in case you forget which is your left and right. It reminds me of when my mum used to try and put a piece of string around my neck with my gloves to let me know which gloves I, or which hand I should put my gloves in. But um, they're ever so comfortable. The ear cups do go properly around the ears. I've often mentioned that my ears, I think, are kind of average size. And these ear cups sit very comfortably over them. And I love this self-adjusting headband. It is a real joy to use. It properly is. It's uh, something I've really enjoyed with these headphones. And I say the, the light design, although they weigh 295 grams, which makes them quite a heavy pair of headphones if you go by the numbers, to be honest with you, when you've got them on, they don't feel like that. And even when you carrying them, they don't feel a heavy pair of headphones. So the whole style and design I really like. And the cable here, which is a five meter coiled cable, I like the fact it's coiled because it doesn't get in the way in the studio. And the other thing that's really great about this is that it is detachable as well. It's a non-proprietary cable, which means if you want to replace it, you can buy any kind of cable that you want online. And it's a really easy fit to do. It just literally snaps back in there. And we love detachable cables on this channel because of course it means the longevity of these headphones should be pretty much, well, time immemorial because that cable is often the point that the headphones give out. And with these, you haven't got that worry. The other thing that I like about these is that the drivers in there are well recessed. So when you've got the headphones on, they sit comfortably behind the pads. They're not pressing up against your ear, which all helps with the sound delivery, which of course we'll be getting onto in just a few moments time. In the box, other than the headphones and some paperwork, and who reads the paperwork? You don't get an awful lot. You just get the jack adapter, a gold-plated jack adapter, and this bag. It's a rather nasty bag. It feels very hard to the touch. It's got a logo on the front. If that's, uh, well, that's about its only saving grace. It's a drawstring bag, and I suppose if you did want to take the headphones out, the bag would at least do the job. Mentioning the bag and the fact you might want to take these headphones out with you, the other thing to point out is they've got a very clever folding mechanism, so they are completely collapsible and would go down very small. I mean, look at that, that is clever. So there's a little hinge on the side there and both ear cups fold in. It's a very clever, but yet robust and solid design. It doesn't feel flaky. I don't feel that you'd have any issues with that over time. So for that bag that they've supplied you with, not that bag's that good, at least the headphones themselves fold down ever so well. So if you wanted to take these out on location, and I can really see myself doing that, then these headphones are super, super compact. They have a very respectful frequency response of 15 hertz all the way up to 25,000 hertz and a 32 ohm impedance, which means that you can use these with iPhones. I've used it with my iPhone 12 regularly. Obviously you need to use the lightning adapter, but they sound really good on there. And if you are taking that about to use with your phone, the fact that the ear cups fold flat around your neck is another good USP with these. So far, I'm really enjoying them. So before talking about any headphones on this channel, I try to wear them for at least a week or two to begin for them to break in and just for me to become familiar with them. And I've done exactly that with these 245s. And I have to say they deal with sibilance quite comfortably. They're not too bright. They're quite a forward pair of headphones in the way that they deliver the sibilant area of the voices in that kind of six and a half to seven and a half thousand range, but they're comfortable in how they deal with the sibilance. They're certainly not uncomfortable to wear. Clearly colored towards professional use. They are flat. I would say they're very flat in their 
delivery. And the soundstage is quite narrow, actually. Um, if you're watching one of my other videos, the uh, it's a video I did last week when I was talking about long-term use of the Sony 7506s, and I was talking about that Miles Davis track with the trumpet that was way off to the right. They had such a wide soundstage on that pair of headphones. You don't get the same wide soundstage with these. It's fairly narrow. It's okay. It's nothing uh, anywhere near as good as the Sony's or the Bayer's for a sound stage, but that's not everything. I mean, clearly from a monitor point of view, that helps you visualize the layout of the session and of the orchestra, but that's not necessarily going to impair your listening experience. And it certainly didn't mind. So the sound stage, reasonably narrow. The delivery on sibilance is quite easy and the overall sound and reference of these is flat, making them very good for mixing and mastering on. I had somebody comment recently, they didn't have a pair of studio monitors, they were merely working on headphones. And I think if you're merely and only gonna be working on monitoring with headphones, actually these would do a very good job for you because they're so flat. So I spoke about sibilance a moment ago, the mids and highs are actually very reasonable on these. I've, I quite like their delivery, very present, and I can enjoy that range of their delivery. It's in the lows that these seem to struggle for me. They're just lacking. There's not much detail there. There's no clarity really to the lows. It's not a deal break. I would still take these out on location with me and the isolation of them, even though they're open back, is actually pretty decent. So location headphones, I can see these working very well. But it's just to give you an idea, depending on how you're working, I had a comment on a video I did recently from somebody saying they haven't got monitors that I'm lucky enough have to have in a studio here. They monitor purely on headphones. If you were doing that, these might not be the ones for you because I feel you're gonna be wanting in the lows. But certainly if you were working with a lot of dry delivery speech, say you were editing and mastering podcasts a lot, then these would work fine. I'd say I felt they dealt with the sibilance very well and they deal with the human voice very, very, uh, with a great empathy. So for that, you've just got to pick how you're going to be using these headphones. Overall, a narrower sound stage, as I said, it's not that huge wide sound stage I've become accustomed to. Uh, and the delivery, although bright and quite present in the lows, you think you'll agree with me, you're going to be found wanting. But getting back to that fit again, they are so comfortable to wear. If you want a pair of headphones you can wear for good many hours of the days, and also at a good price. There's a link in the video to where I got these, and it is an affiliate link, so if you do happen to click and buy through that link, it does help me and the channel out. But uh, as I say, sound-wise overall, decent in the mids to highs, lacking in the lows. So would I recommend these to you? Well, that depends on your usage, and to some degree, how many headphones you've used as well. They clearly are lacking to some of the higher end headphones, but that's not really a fair comparison. I think you need to look at the headphones that are in this similar kind of competitive price range. I've left a link in the description where I got these from and how much I paid. If you do decide to buy a pair through that link, it really helps me and the channel out, it just supports the channel that little bit, which I truly would appreciate. So I think if they're one of your first pair of headphones, or if they you want a pair of headphones that was gonna be very suitable over a, a wide range of uses, say working in the studio, taking out on location, because don't forget, they do fold down ever so small, so they'd be nice and compact, and I don't think the way that they fold up like that, that they're gonna get damaged anytime soon. We love the fact also they've got the detachable cable, which means that's not gonna be a point of weakness for them. The pads, the ear cups are removable, very easily removable as well, so you can renew those when it comes to the time. They're nice and deep, which means that the drivers in them aren't sitting on your ears. I love the fact of this floating headband, which means every time you put them on, the fit is perfect. So from all of those points of view, yes, I would recommend them to you. Now on the sound alone, if you're lucky enough to have another pair of headphones to use along with these, great. If these are to be your only pair of headphones, well, in some degree, you're not gonna know what you're missing. But I would just say with caution, depends on the kind of work you are mixing and mastering with on with these headphones moving forward. They do definitely lack in the lowers, without a doubt. Down there, I found them wanting. Mids and highs, not too bad. Easy on the sibilance. So if you're doing a lot of spoken words, say you're doing a lot of podcast mastering and mixing and editing, these would be super comfortable. They're not any great studio headphones. I can perfectly well see myself using these on the sofa in the evening. They're really comfortable. And I, I really do like the style. So it depends on what you're looking to achieve. But for the money, these are a great all-round pair of headphones that I don't think you'll be disappointed in. Don't forget to let me know in the comments, have you already got a pair of these AKG 245s? What do you think of them? Do you think my 
description of the sound was accurate or are you thinking of buying some and has this review helped in any way? If you are thinking of buying some, don't forget there's an affiliate link in the description which really would help me and the channel out. And I'll be interested to know how you are thinking of using these. I reckon they'd be brilliant for podcast work. That's how I can see myself using these the majority of the time. Just one quick mention again, if you haven't yet subscribed, do so now and don't forget to turn on all notifications. And if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to leave me a like as well. And the next podcast, Minus 16, will be out this weekend. And if you've got a few spare moments at the end, why don't you hang around? I'm going to leave a link where you can watch my review of the Sony 7506 headphones where I put them up against the Biodynamic DT700 Pros. Thank you so much for your company this week. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you on the next one.